Our God is a God of new beginnings. So take a deep breath, because that's a gift from God. Let go of yesterday, because letting go is a gift from God. His mercy is anew every morning. And embrace this day and lift up your heart. Together, we're going to learn how do we find God in everything, every moment, every inch of space. And the word for today, the gift for today is light. I want you to think about light. I want every time today that you see light, you to think about how good God is. A while ago, it was real cloudy outside, and that can be kind of depressing. You may actually live in a place where there is a problem called seasonal affective disorder. You become weighed down from a lack of light. And then when we come out into the light, we are reminded it is a good thing to be alive. Every time you turn on a light today, every time you light a candle or see a lamp or look up in the sky or at nighttime see the moon and the stars, then you think about the goodness of God. And not just that, the invitation today is let your light so shine. Do good things for other people so that they are grateful to God that God exists. We're getting all of this out of the book of Genesis. Genesis is not just abstract information about the background of the cosmos. It was written to people to teach about spiritual and theological reality so that we would know how to live, so that we would have hope and meaning and purpose and understand it's built into life because this is true. Um, it is deeply, literally, spiritually, theologically true. Genesis 1 verse 3, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. Can we just stop there for a moment and think about the fact that light is good? Aren't you glad, have you thought about this recently, that God made light? How awful it would be if we had to exist and such an existence would be possible to God in utter darkness. But that was not his decision. He created light to illumine us, to give us hope, to guide us, to enlighten us, to allow us to see beauty, to allow us to gain life. Part of why I wanted to be outside today was so you could see these little vines are all springing to life, partly through a process called photosynthesis. The Greek word for light is phos or photos. One of my favorite science jokes, a photon checks into a hotel and the clerk asks, don't you have any luggage? And the photon says, no, I'm traveling light. I know it's goofy. I just like that. What a good thing that God made light that can travel all the way from the sun to here at the speed of light. Now, the text says that God created light. There is darkness and light, but God did not create the darkness. Darkness, you see, is the absence of light. Darkness is just nothing. And that's why in the ancient world, darkness was a picture of chaos, all of that which tends to threaten our life. So God did not make it. He separated the light from it, and then he orders it. It's so interesting. It goes on to say, God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and there was evening and there was morning the first day. So God's naming stuff. He's calling things into reality. It doesn't say what we would expect. It doesn't say God called the light light, which is what it is. It doesn't say he called the darkness dark. Why not? He called the light day because God is creating time. He makes uh, the daytime for us to let our light shine, for us to do good works, to be active. And then he orders the night where we can rest and we can sleep. And so part of what we want to do is honor the day and the night. You will hear people say sometimes, there are just not enough hours in the day. Oh, yes, there are. You are not the creator. You are a creature. And so am I. And God gives us the time every day to do what it is that God calls us to do, to let our little light shines in that day. And of course, this is speaking not just about physical light, but about spiritual light. And this promise comes over and over again in the scripture. The psalmist says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom then shall I fear? Or in Isaiah, there's this wonderful promise where it says, uh, In the day when God redeems everything, the sun will no more be your light by day, nor will the brightness of the moon shine on you, for the Lord will be your everlasting light, and your days of sorrow will end. And that came true supremely in Jesus. 
John 1 echoes Genesis. In the beginning was the Word, that is Jesus, in the beginning. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In him was life, and that life was the light of human beings. No more spiritual affective disorder for us. God wants to be with us in every moment through our friend Jesus. And the light has come into the darkness, and the darkness has not, cannot overcome it. Although sometimes it seems like it will. There was a brilliant poet in the 1700s, William Cowper. He was one of the ones who led to the romantic movement in literature and the arts. He struggled as artists sometimes do with emotional ups and downs. He was actually institutionalized for insanity, which in the 1700s was a pretty grim deal. Tried to kill himself at least three times. And through that process, he met God. He came to know Jesus. And that changed his life and uh, solved all of his emotional problems, except, of course, for where it didn't, because even though he knew Jesus, he continued to struggle with emotions as a human being. At one point, 1773, he had a dream that he had actually merited eternal damnation, and so that was a huge struggle. And then things got better. He eventually I uh, met a wonderful woman, and that brought light into his life, and then she died, and uh, uh, that catapulted him into more darkness. But he discovered something. Yeah, he wrote many poems that became hymns. If you've ever heard the phrase, God moves in a mysterious way, his wonders to perform, that was from a Cowper poem called uh, from, light to, from Darkness to Light. But he wrote another poem where he has lines that I love. Sometimes a light surprises the Christian when he sings. It is the Lord who rises with healing in his wings. And what we discover is that when we praise God, when we love God, when we seek to do good in the lives of other people and in this world, when we give light, somehow light comes to us. When we give hope, somehow hope comes back to us. When we give love, somehow it shines in us. Cowper uh, met the former slave trader, John Newton, who had become a follower of Jesus and became quite passionate about the abolition of slavery, wrote a remarkable poem in the 1700s called The Negro's Complaint about the humanity and the mistreatment of African-Americans. And in the 20th century, many, 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 uh, several hundred years later, Martin Luther King Jr. quoted that in the civil rights movement. There was good that Cowper did that was still doing good, still bringing light into a dark world a couple hundred years later. And that's all because of Jesus, who said, I am the light of the world. But not only that, he came to a group of ordinary people like you and like me, and, and here's the word for you today. Jesus says to you today, you are the light of the world. Let your light so shine that people see your good works and give glory to God the Father. So the question now on this day, when God one more time said to the Son, do it again, and light has come, is uh, how do you let your light shine today? What is an act of good, of hope, of encouragement that you can day, make today that will make a difference in somebody else's life? And it can be as creative as the creativity of God. Kind of an unusual thing. My wife, Nancy, you may know, works with a lot of pastors and church leaders, and a lot of them are facing really challenging situations these days. And she loves to bring light to them, to encourage and finds really creative ways of doing that. Uh, one of the guys who's a pastor in this area that she knows and loves dearly uh, collects antique cufflinks. And she found some at a store unexpectedly and she contacted me and she said, is it okay if I buy cufflinks for another man? And I said, sure, as long as that other man is not Kevin Costner. He's been going through some dark times, but somebody else can get him cufflinks. But as long as it's not him. And so she did. And I saw this guy just a couple of days ago. And this has brought him so much joy. I think about a college student who was at the end of his freshman year and no one had asked him to be their roommate. It seemed like nobody wanted to room with him. And then as a sheer act of grace, a man named Kevin did. And that opened up for him a community of friends that changed his life. 
I was talking to another friend this week who uh, he and his wife sponsor a child through Compassion International. He's done it for many, many years. And this last year, he was able to go to that country and visit that child. That child is an orphan, lost first her mom and then her dad, and said to my friend who sponsors, writes letters all the time, you know, for many, many years, I've told people, you are my dad. And that your other children know all about that, and they are my brothers and my sisters. And so that simple act of goodness um, changed those lives. The text says that you are the light of the world. It could be as simple as this. A group of us were with Pat Gelsinger from Intel the other day, and he was talking about how to shine a light in other people's lives. Just the simple expression, can I pray for you? My mom is, uh, has just moved out of the place where she lived for quite a few years. And they were packing up a lot of memories there. My dad died in that home. But she noticed a young guy who was helping in that uh, moving process and from a couple of different indicators, thought he might be a person of faith and uh, asked him about that. And he said, yes, I am. And he said, you know, it's not easy being a young person of my age and trying to follow Jesus, would you pray for me? And she said, I would love to pray for you. And she said, you know, I'm having to leave uh, this home now, and that's not easy for a person of my age. Would you pray for me? And he said, you know, it's going to be a few weeks where she has to unpack stuff into a new home. You could have me and my team come down there and do that for you. And so uh, they let their light shine. Can I pray for you? You can do that today. The God who said, the God who said, let the light shine in the darkness. This is 2 Corinthians 4, 6, I think. The God who said, let their light shine in the darkness, causes his light to shine in our hearts through the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. That's the word for today. Light, see it, be it. End of teaching, beginning of the day with God. Thanks for joining us. My name is Tim. I'm a part of the team here at Become New. If you'd like to receive the emails that go along with each video, you can let us know at becomenew.com slash subscribe. Or if you'd like to receive a text alert whenever we release a new video, you can text the word become to the number 855-888-0444. If you have a prayer request, please let us know. You can text that request to that same number, 855-888-0444. There's a group of us who meet every day to pray over those requests. So we look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.